الحمد لله الحمد لله فاطر الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم ومرق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الأكرم ذو الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم وكتاب المحكم خير ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فنصلي ونسلم ونبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم All praises due to Allah the most gracious and most merciful and peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger. He who Allah guides will never be misguided, and he who Allah misguides will never be guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an splits nearly one third of the Qur'an talking about the people prior to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Giving us stories of the prophets and messengers, giving us stories of the people before us. And these stories aren't just stories for us to listen around a campfire. These stories aren't just stories that we teach our children and don't understand and take benefit from them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قِصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةً لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Truly in their stories, there is a lesson to be taught for those who ponder, for those who wonder, for those who have intelligence. And there's one specific group of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions time and time and time again. And this is the people of Banu Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them more than 40 times in the Quran. Again and again talking about their story. More than, t- more than once talking about their difficulty that they had with Sayyidina Musa. The struggle that they overcame. And part of the reason, some of the understanding that we take as Muslims is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing this story so that we should learn from it. So that we should learn from the struggles and the difficulties that they had. And how they interacted with their Prophet. And there is one specific verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the Banu Israel that I want to comment on today, that I want us to focus on today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, He's talking to Bani Israel, He's saying, Bismillah. Atamurun <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the people of Banu Israel. And in essence, He's talking to all of us, every one of us as well. He's saying, do you command people, do you command others to do good and forget yourself and you are the ones who read the book? Do you not comprehend? Do you not understand? And we see this so often with us as parents, with us as leaders. With us as scholars in the masajid. We see our children doing sins. And we yell at them. And we scream and we give them the worst impression of Islam. Yet we know within our own selves that every last one of us is a sinner. And if someone was to talk to us that way, not only would we be offended, we'd be deeply hurt. So every last one of us as a parent, as a scholar, as a leader, as someone that comes to the masjid, as an adult, we have an obligation to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most excellent of manners. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a most profound example. An example that's taken to the furthest degree. Consider a man calls himself Rabbukumul A'la, I am God on earth. I am the God of all gods. Not only did he commit kufr, he put himself on the level of God. But look what he say, look what the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Sayyidina Musa to do. He sends Sayyidina Musa to Fir'aun, the Pharaoh. And he says, 
فقولا له قولا لينا لعله يتذكر او يخشى and speak to Moses speak to oh Moses speak to Pharaoh in a kind way in a gentle way so maybe his heart will come closer back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are we like that with our children who are Muslim who are just made sins and a lot of times it's out of accident are we like that to them do we treat them in that way and many of us have this verse about Sayyidina Musa memorized we have the Quran memorized we understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Many of us can read and write Arabic fluently. Yet subhanAllah, when it comes to our actions, our actions say otherwise. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His infinite... Before we jump, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comments on this. He says, مَثَلُ الْعَالَمُ الَّذِي يُعَلِّمُ النَّاسُ الْخَيْرُ وَلَا يَعْمَلَ بِهِ كَمَثَلُ السَّرَاجِ يُدِيءُ لِلنَّاسِ وَيُحْرِقُ نَفْسَهِ He's saying the example, the parable of a person of knowledge teaching and enforcing knowledge to everybody around him and then not implementing it himself or herself is like the example of a candle you light the way for everyone around you and you burn yourself the Prophet ﷺ is alluding to something that yes we should help others yes we should guide our children yes we should give them advice and be the best that we can but the way we give it is crucial the how we give it is crucial and more crucial than not is to realize that every last one of us has flaws. Every last one of us has sins. To realize that just because my child or my sibling or my friend doesn't know what my sins are, doesn't mean that they're not there. And for that reason and that reason alone, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to have humility in the way I speak to the people around me. I'm going to have humility in the way I speak to my children. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this religion holistically. And He understood that not all of us will be able to succeed all the time. So He gives us advice. He says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ salah And seek refuge. And seek refuge in patience and in prayer. First, let's look at patience. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began with. He began with sabr. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, As-sabru sabran. There is two types of patience. Sabru inda al-musibah, fahuwa hasan. Patience when a calamity hits. And that is a good type of patience. When someone in your family passes away. When you lose your job. When you face a difficulty in your life, no matter what it is, and every last one of us, without exception, has faced a form of difficulty. And patience during that difficulty is good. But he continues and he says the second type of patience. He says, وَأَحْسَنَ مِنْهُ الصَّبْرُ عِنَّ مَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ He says the type of patience that are even better than the patience when you are in calamities, is the patience of staying away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. And in essence as well, the opposite, the patience in doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. That is the greatest form in Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab's mind of patience. Now we have to ask ourselves and look within. Because no one's going to be able to assess our patience except us. No one's going to be able to know how patient we really are except ourselves. And I said this on this member, and I'll say it again and again and again. Umar ibn al-Khattab's famous statement. He says, حَاسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُحَاسَبُوا Hold yourself accountable before you are accounted for. Only you can hold yourself accountable to how patient you are. It amazes me. It amazes me, especially us as adults. When our bosses or our colleagues yell at us or do something that bothers us, we have an unusual way of controlling ourselves. 
an unusual way of keeping our tongues closed, our mouths closed, excuse me. But when our children do the smallest of things to upset us, all of a sudden we're able to yell. All of a sudden we're able to get our frustration out. It seems like we do it almost consciously. So now we have to hold ourselves accountable. Now we have to make sure that we hold ourselves to a higher level of patience everywhere we go. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a second part. He says, As-sabr was salah Prayer. And as-salah in the Arabic language has multiple meanings. The first of those meanings is what we're doing right now. Your five daily prayers. And as all of us know, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on his dying in his dying bed, on his deathbed, excuse me, he said he's reminding the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As salah, as salah, as salah, as salah. Prayer, prayer. And one hadith, some say, isn't strong. Al farq baynana wa baynahum as salah. The difference between us and the non-believers is prayer. So how are we with our prayers? How are we with our salah? And not just us, how are our children? How are our spouses? How are we helping one another, our family, and our immediate family to make sure that we have that salah, that connection, that bond between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet gave a beautiful parable about salah. He said, consider you have clothing. And every day you go to the river and you were to clean it five times a day. Do you think there will be any dirt on it? And the Sahaba said, No. The Prophet says, That is the parable of salah. When we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day, asking for his forgiveness, asking for his help. Now, in today's day and age, you see millions upon millions of dollars. People spending on meditation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ingrained it in our religion. Has made it a habit that every last one of us has to do. A form of worship that every last one of us has to do. So that's the first form of salah. The second form of salah. A form of salah that we can do constantly throughout the day is in the regards of du'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ سَكَنًا لَهُمْ He's talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, oh Muhammad, pray on them. For truly your prayer on them is an ease to their hearts. But he doesn't mean physically stand up and pray on every last one of his sahaba. He means make du'a for them. So ask yourself right now, how often is my tongue in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How often am I making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can I do more? Is there a way for me to do more? While I'm sitting, while I'm driving, while I'm walking to work, or sitting in my office, or even doing a labor job, whatever it may be. Instead of listening to music or just talking randomly, would it not be better to have my tongue in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And maybe in that remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'll be able to hold myself to a higher standard and allow myself to enter Jannah. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا الله سبحانه وتعالى in, this, in these three ayat that we're talking about where he's talking to Banu Israel he wraps up talking about the people that have patience and have salah and he says they are the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ And dhun in the Arabic language means they assume. But the ulama have agreed that here dhun doesn't mean assume. Here is dhun in the meaning of they have certainty. They have certainty that they will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And I hope all of us have true certainty in our hearts that we'll meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how, what homework are we going to take and going to implement starting this week? What tasks are we going to take and start implementing this week? The first and foremost, we're going to hold ourselves accountable to a higher standard. Every last one of us before he sleeps tonight is going to ask himself or herself, how was I today? How did I do? Was I patient? Did I treat people in a way that I would want to be treated? Did I give myself the highest level of excellence, this level of ihsan that we are aspiring for? And if I didn't, then I'm going to make that intention tonight that tomorrow I'm going to do better. I'm going to be better tomorrow than I was today. I'm going to be better today than I was yesterday. Secondly, if I am going to give advice, and we should give advice to those that have children, to those that have young ones in their families, in their lives, I'm going to give advice in the most excellent of manners. In the way that I would want advice given to me. In the way the Prophet wasallam used to give advice to his Sahaba. In the most kind and generous way that you can. And number three, we are going to consistently take refuge in patience and in prayer. And what that means is, is that yes, we could slip, and yes, it's going to be difficult. But we're going to try our best in every situation to have patience. And every opportunity we get on the drive home today, as you're, as you're sitting at work doing your last few hours of work this week, this weekend, every single opportunity that you get, I'm going to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of my ability. Constantly having that dhikr that we are all aspiring for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the highest level of Jannah. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Allahumma hadina wa hadi bina wa jahanna sabban li man ihtada. Allahumma hadina wa hadi bina wa jahanna sabban li man ihtada. Ibadullah, inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa itai dhul qurba. Wa yanha ayin fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Idhkuru Allah al-azim ayadhkurkum, wa astaghfiruhu yaghfir lakum, wa aqim as-salaam.